Hi, Kathy Taylor here, uh, workshop instructor and collage artist, and I'm here today to show you a little bit about how I create my watercolor collages. Um, I like to create lots of textures and patterns and colors in a fairly unconventional way to start my watercolors with. And so I'm going to show you a little bit about that and then explain to you how I come about doing these different things. So I'm going to get a piece of paper here. I'm using Bristol. This is a recycled paper that I got at Cheap Joe's. It's a Canson product. And what I like about it, not only is it recycled and therefore green, it also has a smooth side and a textured side. I'm going to be using the smooth side. Uh, when I work in watercolors, I like to use hot press paper because it's smooth. And the reason I like to use it is because the, the pigment moves so fluidly on it. I really like that. I mean, that's what watercolor is all about. So I'm going to use a piece of Bristol paper and just show you the basic technique of pouring into pigment placers. Um, I've got some little containers here, yogurt or butter containers are fine to use. And what I've got here are my favorite watercolor paints. These are American Journey. These are Cheap Joe's. I've got pomegranate, which is a super yummy color. And I've got one of my other favorites here, which is a lavender. I've got uh, a cobalt blue and a few others. Uh, I took a call, oh, Junebug, this is one of my favorites too, I love Junebug, and I love the names, how cool are they? So what I'm going to do, instead of painting out of a palette, I'm actually going to take these colors and I'm going to squeeze them into these containers. Now I've already pre-squeezed, if you will, a couple, I'm going to take this one and squeeze a little in here, and I'm putting a goodly amount in there. I know it's expensive, but this is worth it, trust me. Here we go. All right. Now I've got some water in this one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little bit of water into each of these containers, like that. And then I'm going to use the end of my brush to stir the pigments up inside of here. What I'm doing is I'm just simply creating a liquid watercolor, a beautiful liquid watercolor. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to actually pour it into some things like coffee filters and tissue papers and things that I call pigment placers. Now, when I have a creative block, which happens occasionally, this is what I do because it's so much fun to see the colors meld and just not have to worry about any kind of the product. When I teach my workshops, I always say, remember, it's process, not product. Have fun with it. Um, just have a good time and then the product will come as a natural result of that. Um, I think as adults, we're so worried about having something that looks great or looks like the person sitting next to you or you have to be better than. And I think if we all just worried about having fun with the luscious colors and, and just worried about the process and the fun of it, we'd have a lot better time. So these are pigment placers. This is a coffee filter. You probably recognize that immediately. This is toilet paper. Uh, these are tea bags. Without tea, without tea. Okay. Drink tea first, remove tea, and use tea bags. Um, old patterns, which you can get at the Goodwill or, or any thrift store, that, you know, for like a nickel a piece, or if you used to sew. This is tissue paper out of the kind that you get in a shoe box or something. So ladies, you can go out and buy lots of shoes so you can get the tissue paper for free. Um, this is bubble wrap. Um, I've got a candle and I've got a special roller that I use, and I'll show you how to use those. So, what I do with pigment placers is you take the pigment placers, all of which are water soluble, and you place them on your piece of paper. Okay, so I'm going to use a coffee filter because I don't want to go through all of this stuff. I just want to show you how the process works. Now, what I've done is I've placed it on my piece of paper, smooth side up, and I'm going to take my water pigments and I'm going to pour them into this pigment placer. And I'm not worried about the colors or what I'm doing here. I'm just going to let the colors kind of flow. See, I'm spreading out. Cool. All right. Here goes some green. You might have to help it about just a little bit so it'll spread. You don't have to use your fingers. I'm, I'm big on just tactile experience. So. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry. And rather than have you all sit there and wait for it to dry, I'm going to do the um, Julia Childs thing where we stick the raw turkey in the oven and bring one out five minutes later that's cooked. So we're, there's the before, right there, and here's the after. Okay, different colors. But this is what it leaves. It leaves a very, very interesting texture that I don't think I could get doing it any other way. Or, or I could, but maybe it would take me about two years to do. So this is a texture left by a coffee filter. This texture here 
is left by placing bubble wrap into wet pigment and letting it dry. And this is, texture here is made by putting down a wash and then simply taking a tissue paper and rolling it across. It almost looks like clouds. One of my favorite textures is done using waxed paper. This is done by taking a wash of yellow, placing the wash down, and then accordion folding wax paper and placing it into the wash. Then I run other pigments down through by just dripping them in underneath the waxed paper and I let it dry and when you peel it off where the wax paper touched it leaves this column of color which I think is awesome. Here's another one. How pretty is that? I mean, phew. all right, this one here, this is a coffee filter that I had put on. This is where I had put down some waxed paper into some pigment. This still has the tissue paper which we mentioned out of the shoe box. I had poured the pigment into it, let it dry, and now we're going to peel it off and look at the lovely texture that it leaves. Just absolutely beautiful. The nice thing also is you can save your tissue paper and use that for collage too because, you know, it's usable. Um, here's another coffee filter. Okay, I'm big on coffee filters. They're gorgeous. This is waxed paper and saran or cling wrap. This is a cling wrap and that's what it does. It treats a design. This is cling wrap, cling wrap stretched. Ugh, try saying that. What I do when I put it down rather than just crinkle it is I actually stretch it out like this. This makes wonderful water. If you stretch it out and place it down like this, then when it dries, it leaves the striations of the crinkle wrap in it. And then what I do is I'll go back into it and actually pick it up with a little bit of an X-Acto knife to give you little sparkles in the water. So it's a wonderful way to create like a lake or something with that little crinkle wrap. There's a little bit more. There's the crinkle wrap once again that I'd stretched out. Plastic wrap. And if I go back in there, I can hi highlight the little um, sparkles in the water. Probably a lot of you have seen this. This is fun. Put down your pigment. This is uh, Cheap Joe's Blue. And what you do is just splatter it with isopropyl alcohol. Um, I was in a workshop one time and I said isopropyl alcohol and the lady out in the audience raises her hand. She goes, ooh, ooh, where do I get that? Do I have to go to a chemist or, I mean, I don't know where to get it. And I said, it's rubbing alcohol. You go to the, the pharmacy and she goes, well, why didn't you just say that? <laughs> so it's just rubbing alcohol. You just sprinkle it on there and it leaves little, uh, little warts on there. Um, this is another thing I use to create textures and patterns. And all I do is I take an old foam fruit tray like this and break off the edges like that and then what you do is just take an old pencil or the end of a paintbrush and mark into it here we go create any kind of design you want and you can use that as a stamp and I've already got one completed here that I've already done it's got a nice intricate design in it and I fasten a little piece of tape on the back and then I can stamp with it into any of these designs. Now, as I said, when I'm having a creative block, I just do tons of these papers. And I've got a couple of them here to show you. This is all just te different textures and patterns and colors created with coffee filters. You can use um, a wax candle to draw into. This is a, a wonderful thing. I've got an um, old foam roller from one of the dollar store places and I've put rubber band around it and you dip this in several times of pigment and if you roll it like that you get this effect. So there's all sorts of ways to create wonderful textures and patterns. Okay now you've got these and you've had a great time doing them and now you're excited about the colors and the textures and things and now your creative juices are starting to roll. So here's what you do next. What we're going to do next is we're going to get a clean piece of paper right here and we're going to collage onto it. And this is how I've done this little beach house collage here and how I did the sunflower collage here. I started just by making the textures and patterns and colors with the watercolors, pouring them and stamping into them and things. And then the fun part comes because you get to rip them all to pieces. So here we're going to just start one of these little beach cottages or sunflower or something. Let's go find something in here to tear up. 
This is very, uh, it's a catharsis when you're feeling mad at your paint, you can just rip them up. Um, when you're ripping your paintings or your, your textures, if you rip, pull towards you, you're going to get a white edge. Let's get something colorful so you can see. There's a white edge on this. If you rip away from you, you will get a clean edge. And I like the, the contrast of that, so I do that on purpose. And you'll get to be a real um, ripping, tearing specialist after a while. So I guess it's going to be a sunflower today. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to rip up some of this paper. You have to be very careful. You have to be very careful. Just have fun with it. And what I do when I start any collage is I just start with these textures and patterns. I've got some more down here. Let me dig in. See, you get a whole collection of them after a while. And you can use icky, ugh, old paintings that you hate. This is great. Tear them up, make them into something brilliant and new and wonderful. So I'm going to rip up some more leaves here. And again, I'm leaving white texture on part of them, not on others. Let's get rid of the, the blue can be a leaf down here. That's not a petal. And just play with it. I don't glue things down right away um, because I change my mind a lot. So I just leave them there until I get a, a semblance of what I'm going to be doing, and then I'll start to actually tack them down. And what I use to tack them down with is this wonderful, really good clear gel. It's better than glue, and it will hold anything down, and it doesn't buckle things like some of the white glues do. So I'll be using that. All right, let's see. Look at all this fun stuff. This is so cool. I like to rip and tear. You can also cut. You can use deckle scissors, which are the scissors that look like your um, pinking shears, if you ever sewed. Uh, you can use those as well. And just continue to rip and tear and create a collage. This is how the sunflower was started. And here it is now. And I may or may not be done with it. I'm not sure. Um, they continue. Uh, to go. Paintings uh, never really are finished, they just stop in interesting places. That's a, an art quote. Also, once I get done with a painting, such as this beach house, this is a, a cool little collage. I put a little sea turtle in it. Um, I used to live in Florida, and so hence the beach cottages here. Um, but anyway, what I do is I go back into some of my collages with a micron or sharpie pen. And this is a micron pen. They come in different nib sizes, which mean, is to mean a different point sizes. And the smaller the number, like 0, 1 or 0, 3, the smaller the nib. And then like an 8 would be a bigger nib. And what I like to do in my collages is I like to come back in and just pick up little filigrees. So in here, I've just put a little bit of tassel and rope, maybe a little swirl up in here. I've come in and placed a little bit of filigree around the door. I did my little sea turtle and I put his little eyeball on and stuff. And so it just adds a little bit of a dimension to the, uh, to the collage. And these are archival and they are permanent. And they, as I said, they come in different nib sizes. You can also use Sharpies, which both of them come in black and they also come in other colors. And they're wonderful to add dimension to your collage. And this one doesn't have any of that in it and this one does. It's, it's kind of up to you what you want to do. But that's what I do with all my scraps and how I create my textures and patterns in watercolor.